Brethren, pray the Lord. God is our Father who art in heaven and hallowed be his name. Every moment may his name be praised. And I just want to welcome you again to these, our episodes, that actually we find God in every sphere of life, whether times are good or times are bad. But let's give thanks to him. Father God in heaven, thank you for every opportunity that you give us. We pray that you bless us with this word, that you will continue being our help, even during times of trouble, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, as I pray, the character that we read about in the Bible now, we are getting into a book called, a book called Ezra. Ezra is one of the biblical uh, books. And the bearer of the name Ezra was a human being, was a man among the many that were living at that time. And it's written about him. He bears the name of a book in our scriptures. And it comes because there's something that actually God positioned him to do during his time. And so when I read about this biblical men and women, can God be positioning you during your time? That something will be told of you about you when time comes, years and years to come. And will there be anything, will there be a record of something good spoken about you, spoken about me? Now, Ezra is the person that we're talking about now in these scriptures. And he is, he positions himself. Time is not a good time. Had time. And the Bible talks about this period as a period of exile. There were times when the people of Israel could be in their homeland. They enjoy life there. They do good things there. But eventually forget the statutes of God. And that would mean, would mean a disaster. And they would be taken into exile. And at the time that we're talking about, actually they mentioned nations here. They mentioned Babylon. They mentioned Persia. And the nations that came and took these people away because of their lifestyle and we dealt with the book of judges the book of judges we saw many many things many i mean many things happening whenever people would be clinging firmly onto the statutes of the lord they would you know they would enjoy themselves in the land of canaan but whenever they would deviate and go away from the regulations from the guidelines that god had given god would offer them off over to foreign nations to take them. And now this was another time. Now Ezra is positioned in the time of exile and God moves people. And at this time, we are concentrating on the two nations. There is Babylon, there is Persia, and there are kings that are mentioned in the scripture here. But let me just read very quickly a few verses in chapter one during his time. And then I will, I will divide up the book into two uh, portions that actually parts that we talk about, then I will give a few lessons that we can pick from this man Ezra. But I've already mentioned something that as you live here on us, what it is, what is it that will be impactful when you live? Ezra leaves us something here and we are going to look at the meaning of his name. And maybe let me say it immediately. Ezra, I just visited my, revisited my little Hebrew that I know. Ezra is means, in Hebrew means help, Ezri, just like you hear Ebenezri, Ebenezer, which we say that to this father, that the Lord has helped us. So Ezra, Ezri, is about help. And so this is something that actually shows God is help to his people. Even during times of exile, God is help was with them. Even during times, whatever they were, God is help is abundant. And even during our time, May God be our help in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in chapter 1, the Bible says that um, in the first year of Cyrus, so they mentioned the name Cyrus here, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, they mentioned the prophet Jeremiah here, might be fulfilled. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. So they are introducing to us a king here called Cyrus, an instrument that God used to bring rejuvenation, to bring revival in the lives of the Israelites who were in exile. Now, 
In verse 2, thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Praise the Lord that God can raise up worldly leaders, national leaders to do his work. And Cyrus is somebody whom we talk about here. Now, friends, if you're a leader in whichever capacity, may God's spirit stir you up like he stirred up Cyrus to do his work. And the work that he had to do was to build to rebuild the house at Jerusalem because it had been destroyed during the time when they were, the Israelites were being taken. I saw the word of the Lord came and said, stand up you, Cyrus, that you do something. So this is in verse 3, he says, whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let each survivor, pray the Lord, let each survivor in whatever place he sojourns be assisted by the men of his place with silver and gold, with goods and with beasts, besides free will offerings for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the heads of the fathers' houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priests of the Le and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred up to go up to, to build the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. Now, pray the Lord that a world leader, a national leader, stirred up to start the work of God. Cyrus, a leader, being stirred up through the prophecies that are coming to rejuvenate the people of God. And it is through this Cyrus that people like Ezra, people like Nehemiah, people like Haggai, Zechariah, these are mentioned in this book here, that they were stirred up the priests and Levites. Now Ezra was one of the priests that these touched. And who starts this? A world leader, a national leader, Cyrus. And so Ezra comes into picture. This book is named after him. But in these first chapters from one to six, he's not anywhere. He is actually being groomed you know, he revives himself before he comes as the exilees, the returnees go back. Having been, you know, encouraged by Cyrus, the king that actually God stirs up. And praise the Lord that actually this book exists, that we read about it, that even when times can be so hard that God's people are taken into exile, even when things are so hard that spirituality goes down. God will provide a way out and spirituality will be back on its feet. And so in chapters 1 to 6 of the book of Ezra, recounts how the Jews returned. Of course, the king at this moment is called Cyrus or Persia and he encourages them. They return to Jerusalem and how works began. And because actually their spirits had been stirred up. Now, but as you read on, the neighbors, in this same chapters 1 to 6, the neighbors were not happy. So, and so there was opposition. And so the work went slowly because the work had started having been, you know, encouraged by Cyrus, the priests starting off and going, but the neighbors were not happy. Opposition. But finally, the temple was rebuilt despite the problems that they encountered. So friends, in the book of Ezra, by the way, there are only 10 chapters. But can you also take time and read it through? They are not just mere stories. You will find they are complicated names. But these people's names mentioned, the returnees went there to do the work that God had purposed for them. 
had programmed for them. And so in your life, brother, my sister, may God use you to do something. And here, despite the opposition, despite the difficulties, which each one of us faces, the devil is never, the devil is not always, not always happy when something good is happening, when God is raising up, you know, something, revival, something, the renewal that comes, opposition will always be there. But we shall pick a lesson from Ezra. And so chapters 1 to 6 talk about this. And then chapters 7 to 10 is when Ezra comes very, very vividly into a picture. And so he, there, was, there were two categories of returnees. The first batch returned. And so Ezra, from chapters 7 to 10, he comes in the next batch. So he arrives in Jerusalem with other returnees to teach the law of the Lord. Ezra, however, was horrified that Israel was committing the very sins that other nations were committing. The nations that were called pagans, adulterers that had to speak, you know, stealing, robbing, doing lots of things that actually other foreign nations were known for. And so Ezra was horrified. And so the reason why he institutes revival meetings, prayer times, fasting. And when you read chapter 7 to 9 to 10, you discover that Ezra does great things to bring about revival. And so this Ezra man was a scribe, skilled in the law. He was the main character in this book. Now we need, during our times, we need an Ezra. We need somebody. We need people that will read the word of God and be, you know, uh, skilled in it. Leave alone the times when we are living that actually people give interpretation to scriptures and the interpretations which are wrong. We need people who are skilled in the word of God. People will sit down and read and think through it, guided by the spirit of God, that they will be give proper interpretation. And so this man, Ezra, was a scribe, was a reformer, he was a rebuilder. He preserved the teachings of the, of the word of God. And so during our time, we need the Ezra type of people that will not just jump with one of us, give it, give it an interpretation that is satisfying to them, and they do wrong things. The Bible desires that actually we have to read the context in which the verses, in which the scripture is. And Ezra was in exile, but he took time to study the word of God, to study and, you know, brings meaning to this. So the book of Ezra tells this entire story. Oh, these whole events that happened in Babylonia, that happened in, in Persia, and the kings that God brought on board. So that actually, work started. So he comes into picture to teach the law. Ezra comes into picture to rebuke those who married foreign women. We read in chapter 7, and he comes, and lots of these things happen. He urged the people to repent. Chapter 9. Now repent of the sins. And so during our generation, friends, we need people that will be speaking the truth. Not to hide the sin. Not to do go with the wrong. So the main idea is about, you know, obedience. That they are called upon to obey the law of the Lord. He records regathering. People regathering or gathering again. Now, he also records, even when they regathered, there were struggles to survive after exile during the reign of King Cyrus. They mention several of them, and some of them I have complicated names. There was Cyrus, there was Darius, there was Ataxaxes. Complicated names. But when you read them, there are things that they did. And so, Jerusalem had been destroyed, but they had to regather. And not just the destruction of the buildings, not just the destruction of the nation, but even the records, the writings had been burnt. And yet we need the, we need the records. We need the records. Our families need the records. Our nations need the records. Our districts need the records. But the records had been burnt. And so the rebuilding was at the center. And when you rebuild, you have to bring back. The reason why Ezra was a scribe, we need people that write. We need people that record things. Population censuses, records. 
financial CE matters records and so that actually you can read and see the record of things. So Ezra sparked of a spiritual revival. He renewed the covenant with God. We need a record. And Ezra presents this very, very much. And so I urge people to be record people. The reason why I need to have a book to record something, I need to have a pen to record something because we are able to forget it. Or if you have your gadget, you have your phone, you have your laptop, you have recording something because we are liable to forgetting. And so these people could forget and they forgot indeed when they were taken into exile and things, many things happened. So Ezra, a scribe, I pray that God will raise up men and women of the Ezra type here. So it presents a great time here. When you read chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, you will see him leading people into intercessory prayers, prayer and fasting. And so on return, this is what happened. And also in chapter 3, you discover that many, many things are happening there. And this by the opposition, this by the difficulties that they were facing. So they rebuilt the altar first and restored the sacrificial systems. We need to restore the altars. We talk about altars in our houses, altars at, you know, at our worship places, altars, prayer altars at our workplaces. Ezra, in this chapter 3, talks about revival of revival of altars. And they set up an altar, Ezra 3.3. 3. For fear was on them because of the peoples of the land. And they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, burnt offerings morning and evening. Praise the Lord. Morning and evening. And so you read this chapter 3, you'll discover a secret in reviving the altars. And so they gave money, they gave lots of things. Now, may God help us to revive our altars. Adversaries will come. Enemies will come. In chapter 4, we read about them. Adversaries, enemies will come. Even when you are doing God's thing. Even when you are doing God's work. Enemies will not spare you. But one thing that we discover from Ezra, like we shall also find something about Nehemiah, they never gave up on prayer and fasting. They trusted God. And so chapter 4 talks about being aware of adversaries, being aware of enemies, being aware of frustrators. You may start something good. You may start something spiritual, reviving the church and things like that, but there will also be uh, the, the, um, these frustrators, the people that want to frustrate the programs. But Ezra gives us an example that God will raise up people, including the national leaders. And so we call upon our national leaders that actually this Cyrus man, Cyrus represents you in the scriptures. Praise the Lord. All our political leaders, Cyrus you know, including Ataxaxis, actually he does something, Darius. But also, we had the Nebuchadnezzars. Because the Nebuchadnezzars are like that caused the havoc. And, but all happens for the work of God, for the greatness of God. So we call upon the Cyruses that God will raise up among our people and that there will be rebuilding of the work of God. So, one thing that Ezra shows us also is a regathering of the records. Shall we find the records? In Ezra we find, keep the records. Enemies come to destroy the records. Enemies come to destroy the records. But we need to be scribes that after exile we regather, that we bring them back. And so may God help us, most importantly, to spark the spiritual revival. And so they rebuilt the altars and God helped them and they were able to do their work. So in chapter 7, we find all those. So a few things that I want to add and then I will finish that um, they obeyed to rebuild the temple at explicit instructions by Cyrus. So we urge our leaders to encourage the people. 
Cyrus encouraged the people. We need this at all times encouragement from our leaders, be it church leaders, be it political leaders, so that God's work will go on. And those that go to churches and you find them involved in church programs, praise the Lord for you. Talking about church issues, praise the Lord. And so that actually God's work will, will be standing and because actually a nation that has God as their nation, as their God, a nation that has God as their God will stand out and will stand the test of time. So our loyalty should indeed be to God, like Ezra exemplifies. So choose to obey God, friends, during our generation, during our time. Choose to obey God. And remember that God is greater than those who oppose his works. Eventually, he will be a victor. By grace, the work during Ezra's time continued. And by grace, I pray that your work will continue as a church, will continue as you continue on. So Ezra stood as a priest and led them back to God. And so we need the Ezra's that will stand up as priests. I pray for myself that I'll be able to stand out and lead God's people into revival. And so may we have leaders like Ezra being purposeful, being passionate, passionate, pray the Lord, being passionate and being bold and being encouragers and being teachers and so that the work of God will move on. And so it is possible to study the law of the Lord, to stick to it, to be a scribe, to be a writer, and to be a reader of God's word and to be somebody who applies it. And so people always forget the statutes, I know, but we need the records we need to write down something that will revive people's hearts. So in chapter 8, as I end, there is a proclamation that's made about prayer and fasting and because prayer moves mountains. Read those chapters, 8 and 9, and you see people praying and, you know, uh, trusting God and, you know, so that kind of things move and move well. And so these chapters, the heads of families, the leaders proclaim the fast. Look at 8.21. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him a safe journey for ourselves, our children, and all our good is praise the Lord. You know? Safety for ourselves, safety for our children, safety for our properties. And we pray that God will move us at this time. Friends, it's time that cuts us short, but there are stories that are in this book that will energize us. And when we talk about our children, you and your children, you and your family. The reason why Joshua does it says, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And so may you with your family, with your children, with your parent, with your parent, with your children, if your children, with your parent, and all your properties, your house, your car, your everything, your land, praise the Lord. And this is something that actually that we are getting from here. So prayer and fasting is very, very important, and Ezra did that. And so God moves in the hearts of our national leaders, kings and authorities, Cyrus, Ataxaxes, Nebuchadnezzar, and they fulfill God's purposes. Some could be negative, but some could be positive, and God will use you like he used this. So, even when our opposition, remember that leaders, national leaders, are positioned by God. Romans 13, Cyrus came, Darius came, Nebuchadnezzar and the other, the rest were, but authority comes from the Lord. And this is what it says that for there is no authority except from God. So let us urge ourselves to continue moving on. And may God bless you and watch over you. That this Ezra man, have you heard about him? Continue reading about him in his book. The book that bears his name. Read chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not very many. And then you'll gather something. That revival will come into your house. Revival will come into the church. 
revival coming to the nation. Because actually we need to be up spiritually and to be up economically and socially when things are moving well. The world is now having lots of challenges because we have scattered ourselves. But we need to come together as one man. And the Bible in this book says that these people came together as one man during their prayer, during their fasting, and things started moving. Ezra, which means help. May God help you and may God help me. And so that our time will be a time of putting things right, of revival, economically, revival, spiritually, revival, socially, and our nations will grow. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.